Title, Demystifying Inherited Retinal Disease and Genetic Testing. Learn more at eyesongenes.ca. Caption, Genetic Testing in the Context of Inherited Retinal Disease Can Seem Mystifying. Award-winning actress Sophie Nalise had a conversation with Ruan Lai, a Taiwanese-Canadian artist, scientist, and mother who has had genetic testing for an IRD. Sophie Nalise. Today, I have the opportunity to interview or have a sit-down conversation with Ruan. She's going to walk me through her experience and just how it has impacted her life. I've never really heard about genetic eye testing. I had actually also never heard of the term IRD. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm very curious to see how someone goes through life with that diagnosis. Sophie, an auburn-haired young woman, and Ruan, a dark-haired young woman, sit in chairs facing one another. Hi, I'm Ruan. I'm living with retinitis pigmentosa. It's an inherited retinal disease that can lead to total blindness. There's the rods and then there's the cones. The cones are responsible for usually daylight vision and color whereas the rods are responsible for dim light uh, vision and night vision. And when did you first notice signs that you may be living with a condition that affected your vision? When I was 12. It was my first time at a summer camp. And at first I would notice, no, I'm not walking as fast as my peers. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm not used to walking in the woods or over these routes. And I was following everyone. Uh, as much as I could, and then I noticed that if I had taken one step more, I would have fallen into the water, the mm -hmm. lake. And I didn't see that until it was right in front of me. Mm -hmm. My mother has night blindness, mm -hmm. and I thought, okay, maybe this is related. Caption, one in 1,700 Canadians are estimated to have an inherited retinal disease. Dr. Larissa Meniz. There are over 300 different mutations that we know of that can cause an IRD, which means that each disease can be quite different. So when somebody has retinitis pigmentosa, some of the first symptoms they'll have is that they often can't see at nighttime or in the dark conditions, and they'll start to, as their disease progresses, get more and more tunnel vision till they only have a very small amount of vision, and even then they'll start to lose central vision and detailed vision after that. Sophie. And when were you officially diagnosed with an IRD? It was towards the end of my master's, I felt like um, my vision was declining a lot more. I had access to all the scientific articles and I knew my vision was not the same as before, so I just started mm -hmm. reading about these eye conditions, loss of peripheral vision, um, night blindness, and what came up was retinitis pigmentosa. And then also I read, like, okay, it could lead to total blindness, total vision loss. And so I said, okay, if I have this, I need to know now. I went to the ophthalmologist and he said, yeah, like we had, we're, we're sure, we're, we, we confirm that you do have retinitis pigmentosa. Would you like to have your genes tested? It's a re inherited retinal disease. You know, we would take your blood sample. You would contribute to, contribute to research and to more understanding of this body of knowledge. Caption, 50% of people with retinitis pigmentosa have no knowledge of a previous family history. So there's two components to a diagnosis. You have the clinical diagnosis and you have the genetic diagnosis. A genetic testing really is the way to confirm a diagnosis. So you know that for sure you have an IRD and it also tells you what type of IRD you have. So the genetic component is a, a really crucial part to the diagnosis. Sophie and Ruan. And since it's genetic, was that something you took into consideration when deciding to have kids, knowing that there was a possibility that you would pass that gene along? So when I was pregnant with my first child, um, I was referred to a genetic counselor, and we had long discussions about what would happen and what could happen. Caption, while you can't change what you inherit, you may uncover answers that could put you in more control when it comes to future lifestyle changes. Talk to your ophthalmologist and talk through um, what are the pros and if there are any potential cons for you, and so you can make a decision. A decision that's right for you and that's right for your family. It is so different for every family if you would like to get your kids tested or not. For me, it's about letting them know that living as a visually impaired person doesn't mean you're a lesser person. There are different ways of living. We're learning Braille together, and it's like a game for them. So they're, they're developing the skills to 
interacted with the world in a different way. Images of Ruan and her children on the beach, then skiing. Ruan and Sophie. And do you have any maybe advice for um, someone listening that just got diagnosed? Find those who can self-identify with and they're living their life to the fullest. There's always a way. There is a way. It's not the able-bodied way, but there is a way. You just have to be more creative about it. It's the fears and the negativity that are in your own head that's holding you back. You do have the power to choose how you react to the world and anyone around you. For other people that have symptoms or maybe are just at risk because uh, they have relatives that maybe have symptoms, um, what would your advice be for those people? about being genetically tested. Getting your genes tested, one, it helps you. Knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. And two, it helps to move the research forward. And in 2011, there were 60 genes um, done when I did the genetic testing. In 2022, there were 351 just imagine the vast amount of knowledge that we have already uh, acquired. You know, you just sit there and you do the cheek swab, it's easier than getting your makeup done. Caption, over 270 genes related to inherited retinal disease have been identified so far. It's a really simple process. Um, you'll talk to your doctor, you'll talk to a genetic counselor, but the actual getting your DNA, really simple, can be as simple as a swab on your cheek. Once you know what your disease is, it sort of opens you up to um, getting more information. I think a lot of patients feel very empowered. They can do research about it. Um, they can hopefully find other members in the community who maybe have the exact same genetic mutation and understand what is their journey being like. We also have um, heard from parents who will have a child who's been recently diagnosed and when they meet somebody who is maybe older, further along in their journey, who is, um, has dealt with it, has a wonderful career, hobbies, is out there, it makes them feel so much better about what the possibilities are for their child as well. It just gives it that sense of community and the feeling that they're not alone. You know, for me, genetic testing is not just about knowing the medical diagnosis or knowing the gene. For me, it really was accepting that this condition is part of my identity. It's like saying, oh, I have black hair. I have retinitis pigmentosa. Mm. That's it. It's part of your identity. And that's how I bring myself to this world. I know for me, hearing you talk and seeing you so full of light and, and so inspired still by life, uh, your story is just really, um, you really are a role model for me and it has made me very emotional hearing you talk. So thank you for being so transparent and so honest about your journey. Thank you for the opportunity for letting me share my story. Caption, the earlier you test, the earlier you may receive an accurate diagnosis. What I took away from today's talk about genetic testing is that it's not invasive. It's actually really easy. It's a sample from your cheek. It just, um, goes to show how, you know, how important it is to be doing the genetic testing and, and how much it's important to raise awareness about this. I definitely think that anyone that may be experiencing symptoms should go get genetically tested because, first of all, it just empowers you. It's, it's a way of learning more about your body. It just helps you prepare for the future and it creates a bigger database and to hopefully find more genes. And so I only see a positive outcome. This is your chance to have your voice heard by doing your genetic testing. It's not just another data point, it's raising your voice. Ruan plays the cello. Caption, Johnson & Johnson. Learn more at eyesongenes.ca, fightingblindness.ca.